All right, so this is the last in my series of moving from Petropon to green sand. Um, it's been a long process. I have learned a lot along the way, and I can say that I am really, really happy that I've done it. Uh, in the earlier videos, I talked about why. Uh, basically, it's because Petrobon's dirty, it is smelly, it smokes to high heaven, and it costs a fortune. Just to give you an idea how much you can save by making green sand. The green sand that I'm going to show you, uh, it costs less than $10 for 50 pounds. Uh, here in the States, uh, the equivalent amount of Petrobon will end up costing you about 10 times that, or even more. I broke my glasses. All right, let's get into it. So any casting sand, whether it be petrobond or green sand, is composed of a few common components. Uh, there's the sand, obviously, uh, and then there's going to be a binder. And a really common binder for green sand is bentonite clay and water. So when I got started uh, on this green sand journey, I was using clumping cat litter. Uh, Non-clumping cat litter is the wrong stuff. <laughs> Stay away from that stuff. I mixed the cat litter into the sand, I uh, added water, I stirred it all up, I let it dry out, and I did a pretty good job of, of mixing things up and getting the clay to mix and bond with the sand. But I had a ton of people telling me that I need yeah, a ton, I had a couple of people tell me I need to go to a farm supply store uh, and buy pulverized bentonite. We have three farm supply stores here in, in this small Colorado town that I live in. All of them are chains, and so they all have websites, and none of their websites claim to sell bentonite. All right, so one day I was thinking, I should just get my car, drive around, and see what some of these places have. But the first place I went to, uh, they just don't carry it, period. Second place, a place called Tractor Supply, told me that it is a seasonal product, and that they'd have it in the spring. Uh, the third place I went to was a place called Boomgars. Uh, the first person, <laughs> first person I asked said, I don't think we've got it. But he ended up asking another person. She said, yeah, we have it, but I don't know where it is. And finally, a third person came and showed it to me. Um, it was in the feed section of all places. So the moral of the story here is that it may be out there where you live, but you might have to work for it. <laughs> So this is the stuff that I bought at $12 for a 50 pound or 23 kilo bag. Uh, I don't think I'll be buying cat litter again. <laughs> I've added links to the bentonite that I'm using uh, down in the description. This stuff is supposed to be screened at 200 mesh. Uh, and I have found that for the most part, it's, pretty, it's screened pretty fine. But uh, you can see that when I run it through my 50 mesh screen, I'm still catching stuff. Uh, and you can see here that what it pulls out is some gray chunks. I'm not sure what these are, but uh, I found that if I leave these in the mix, these things sort of form together to form these balls of clay that it's just not right. And um, so if you get this stuff, you might try to screen it before you add it to your sand uh, and you add water to it. So let's move on to the sand. Uh, if you watched my earlier videos, you saw me using play sand from the local hardware store. Uh, and this is because I tried, I really tried, but I could not find a place to buy sand. Uh, so I even went as far as contacting a guy that runs a composting company to see if he knew where a local sand supplier. He told me about one, and it was while I was trying to find a con kind, kind of contact information for that local sand quarry, uh, I ran across a place called United Western Denver. I don't know why I never saw this before. I'll put their link down in the description as well. Uh, I looked at their website. It wasn't terribly intuitive, at least not to me, and I, but I did find that they sold sand. Uh, and not only sand, but screen sand as well. So I ended up getting the finest sand that they had. The sand is ultimately from a company called Wedron. Uh, and the product I bought was identified as 730 or 730. Now this chart shows three things. It shows the size of the particle uh, in microns, it shows the mess size, and it shows the percent of the composition. So. 47.5% of my sand is made up of particles that are between 150 and 106 microns. Almost 29% of the sand is made up of particles that are between 
106 and 76 microns. You get the idea. I'll link the table um, that describes all of their products in the description. They say that this 730 product has an AFS GFN of 80. That's the American Foundry Society grain fineness number. This is up as 80. Uh, and I have a 50 mesh screen. So in theory, in theory, this new sand is finer than the sand I sifted. Although the sand I sifted contains particles that are finer than the 50 mesh screen. So I don't know, they're probably close. But here's the kicker. Um, this stuff cost me $8.80 for a 50 pound bag. It comes bone dry. I don't have to stand there for hours sifting it. And I get to use all of the sand in the bag. The play sand had about a 60% yield by the time I removed the large grains from it. Uh, I can promise you this. I will not be buying play sand from the hardware store again. <laughs> At least not for casting. Uh, and I have to tell you this as well. Um, the guys that I bought this stuff from were great. I, I drove down to their warehouse. Uh, I walked into the front desk and I talked to the guy. And he told me about a number of things that they sell. Uh, they sell binder, they sell parting compound. Uh, I ended up buying, it's a great salesman too, I guess. I ended up buying a 75 pound box of something called diamond part. Uh, it wasn't cheap, but uh, at least not compared to the sand, it wasn't cheap, but uh, it should last me for a really long time. So we'll see how that, that works out. Uh, finally, I mixed this sand and the bentonite in a 90-10 ratio by weight. That's 90 grams of sand to 10 grams of bentonite. And for what it's worth, that turned out to be about 7 to 1 by volume. All right, so this, uh, this is about sand and not so much about casting. So I'm going to speed through this section pretty quick. Uh, at the time I shot this, I only, had, I only had a small amount of sand made up using this new sand. And uh, I'm using it like a facing sand here. Uh, and then I'm just going to cover the part or the pattern with the sand. Uh, the rest of the sand is sand that I made up from sifting the play sand and mixing the cat litter in with it. That's what the rest of the sand is. And one thing I don't think uh, I mentioned in the previous videos is just how hard you can ram this, this new sand. And uh, you can ram it really, really hard. <laughs> I forgot to put a board underneath the plaque, so I am having to be very careful when I turn this over. With this new sand and parting compound, this pattern has a tendency to fall out uh, if it's not supported. Okay, we're all rammed up, and you can see how clean the mold looks here. Uh, you can also see the new sand and how the pattern is pretty much contained uh, in that new sand. I'm going to take the part out of the sand. Uh, this new facing sand just gets dumped in with the rest of my play sand, so it will eventually all be uh, the same consistency. This is always the exciting part, the pour. We're going to pour into the basin. We're going to pour it fast enough that it can supply the sprue as it comes over the ridge and keep the sprue full the entire time you pour. And I can assure you <laughs> that the crucible and the metal are not pink when I pour. Uh, this is an artifact of using cheap GoPro knockoff cameras. The metal is silver and the crucible is orange. We're going to wait just a couple of minutes uh, and open the mold. Um, and for something as thin as this plaque, I generally only wait until the metal in the pouring basin has solidified before I open it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the last plaque I made with the sand that I spent hours sifting uh, and this new sand. Uh, on the left is the previous plaque I made with the play sand, and on the right is the, sand, is the plaque we just cast. And I realize a lot of people watch uh, on their phones or on their tablets. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to make these things as big as I can. Uh, and I'm going to start in the upper left corner and I'm going to work clockwise around the plaques. This corner is the smoothest part of the pattern. Uh, and I notice two things happening here. First, the flat part actually kind of looks smoother to me than it in the play sand than it does in the new sand. But the stars in this new sand seem to be better to find than the other ones. I don't know. It's probably me. It's probably all me. <laughs> uh, moving to the upper right corner, uh, they look pretty similar as does the lower right. Uh, you can see holes in the surface of both plaques. <sighs> I believe this is from loose sand entering the mold during the pour. Uh, I blow a lot of compressed air through these things. 
So I, I'm not sure where the sand is coming from, but it's there. I mean, it's obvious it's there. And finally, if you ignore the uh, the breakout I had from extracting the pattern in the new sand, the lower left corner of the two castings is it's pretty similar. I got one thing I'm going to call all of you Americans out on is the fact that only one person caught the fact that this flag is incorrect. What's even worse, I modeled this pattern and I thought I had done it correctly, but I hadn't. So hats off to Greg Cheney up in Alaska for catching it and pointing it out. I have a new pattern now and that is what I will be using for any future castings of this plaque. <sighs> So in my opinion, there really isn't a lot of difference between the two sands, the sifted play sand and the pre-sifted sand that I purchased. In fact, as I said earlier, I think the distribution's probably kind of the same, the distribution of granule sizes. Um, but the big difference to me is the convenience. The, uh, the cost is actually probably similar, uh, when you, especially when you factor in the fact that I ended up um, getting about a 60% yield out of the play sand. Now, before you think that the, I'm being totally negative on, on Petrobon, for those of you that are thinking about getting started, uh, I can tell you that Petrobon is a great place to start. Uh, you don't have to worry that it's right. Uh, it comes right out of the box or the bag, ready to go. It's pretty forgiving. Uh, it can be reused a number of times. Uh, and in, in, I would say in many ways, Petrobon helped me to know what this green sand should be like. Uh, so don't let me steer you away from using the Petrobon and getting started there. Now, for those of you that have been casting for a while, I don't know, man, you tell me. $10 versus $100, I guess it's your call. You guys have a great day.